This morning, I'm going to share with you what the gospel is all about. I'm going to give you a very simple presentation about what is the essence of Christianity, the gospel. And so if you have your Bibles, turn to Mark chapter 1, verse 15. And if you don't have your Bibles, it's okay because we'll put it on the screen. And what I'm about to read to you this morning is the very first message that Jesus gave. The very first time that he launched his public ministry after he went into the wilderness and prayed and fasted for 40 days. This is the very first message that Mark records that Jesus gave. And this is what it says in verse 15. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. So this is the essence of the very first message that Jesus ever preached. Repent and believe in the gospel. And so this morning, what I'm going to try to do is explain what that word repent means and what it means to believe in the gospel. And so I've titled this message very simply, Leave and Believe. Leave and Believe. So the word repent is, is an interesting word because it's lost its power over 2,000 years. 2,000 years ago, when Jesus preached this, people fully understood what it means. But today, uh, it's lost a lot of its significance. And so can I, can I explain it to you? Because a lot of us kind of got, you know, the, the, the mad guy with a sign, repent, because, you know, the time, is, you know, your end is nigh. And, and, but repent comes from a Greek word, metonia, which simply means to change directions. Actually, it's a little bit more than change directions because it literally means to leave behind you all that is wrong with your life and turn and follow God. How many of you know that there's stuff in our lives that's wrong? Let me explain it to you. I've got a little prop that I'm going to use today. Are you ready for my little prop? Here it is. I've got it here. So this is the way that life is. We all have a trailer that lags behind us. And so we, we, we present, you know, as you know, a good-looking rooster or a good-looking young lady or a, you know, a, a nice person but what a lot of people don't see that all of, all of us have a trailer of stuff that we carry. And we keep it hidden. How many of you know we keep it hidden? There's a, there's a cover over it until we're under stress or someone presses a button. And then what happens is that the cover comes off and all of a sudden the garbage bags of stuff that we have piled up over our lives is exposed. And so what, what are these? See, every event in our lives carries a memory. And with some of the events, they carry what we call hurts. And we carry them with us. And how many of you know that you leave hurts in your trailer for any period of time and people can start to smell it? It's like... Wow, that's, um, that's not a nice smell. It's in garbage bags and leave it in the garbage bag long enough and, uh, it starts to, and it starts to create pain. Has anybody ever had a disappointment in their life? You know, disappointments. Now, now, with a lot of us, it's not just disappointment with people. It's also disappointment with God. God, why did you let this happen? Why did you do this, 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 this against me? And, and you know what? The Bible talks about the sins that we've committed, but sometimes it's the sins that have been committed against us that we carry as well. And so with, in, in this pile, there's guilt, there's shame, there's, oh, there's, there's a whole heap of stuff, and wherever we go, we carry it. And what we try to do sometimes is that we try to turn over a new leaf and we try to walk into a new year and say, it's a new year. I'm going to walk into my new year and start again. What we don't realize, the trailer comes with us. We, we, 
we'll, we'll go to a new town and start again. The trailer comes with us. I, 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 I'll get rid of my old spouse and, and, and I'll try a new one and uh, the trailer comes with us. And what happens with all of us, whether it be on Instagram or whether it be on Facebook or on social media, we present the car, polished up and looking bright. We don't focus on the trailer that's attached to the car. We want everybody to see how shining and bright the car is, but we don't want anyone to see what's in the trailer. And this is what Jesus was saying. He's saying, can I deal with your trailer of rubbish. Can I do? And so, so this, is, this is what Jesus wants us to do. Repentance is simply going to the cross. Repentance is simply going to the place where this stuff can truly be dealt with. It's called the cross of Jesus Christ. And at the cross of Jesus Christ, we can take our guilt the guilt that we feel bad. Is there anyone that has not had some regret in your life that constantly creates guilt? And when you think about it, you sort of, oh, I didn't even want to think about that because the guilt is so strong. Jesus says, take the guilt out of your trailer and put it at the cross. What about, what about, what's, what's this one? This is all the disappointments that I've got with God. Leave it at the cross. Take it there because Jesus died to remove all of that. People that have sinned against me, all the pains and hurts that have come by people hurting me and sinning against me at the cross. What about all my other hurts at the cross? What about my unforgiveness at the cross? What about my shame at the cross? What about all of my sins? sins at the cross and you leave it there and Jesus takes it and then what he does is that he replaces it with gifts that he wants you to receive the rubbish stays at the cross and the gifts are given to you one of the gifts is the gift of a clean record. To have it wiped clean. Every sin, every guilt, every shame wiped clean. And inside the gift of a clean record is a gift of eternal life in heaven. See, I, I tell you, you cannot get to heaven with all that junk. The only way you can get to heaven is with a clean record. And the only way you can get a clean record is to go to the cross and he says, I'm going to separate your sins, your hurts, your pains, your disappointments. As far as the east is from the west, remove them from you. Never, ever, ever to keep them on record and give you a clean record in its place. What else do you get? You get, you get your past is resolved. Your past will never be forgotten, but it needs to be resolved. And it's resolved by the cross. It's resolved by Jesus forgiving you. It's resolved where, where now you know, well, my guilt has been removed. My shame has been removed. That event that happened that was so abusive, God's forgiven me. And because he's forgiven me, I'm going to forgive others. So I live not forgetting the past, but resolving the past and becomes a present in my trailer. And then what God wants to give us is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit gives us this sweet spirit. Whereas before that was full of pain, people press a button and rah, the roar comes out. Now he wants to so heal you on the inside that when the button is pressed, all that comes out is sweetness out of your life. It's the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, the gift of God in your life transforms you. And when you go through life with these things, I'm telling you, your trailer now is resolved and wherever you go you bring a sweetness you bring a beautiful perfume not a stench when you come into people's lives they can press buttons in you but those buttons don't create reactions they just create a sweet spirit that God wants in your life yeah we all got a trailer but the trailer is either filled with all the rubbish or it's filled with all the gifts. Your choice and the choice is by you coming to the cross and making 
the exchange. Leave, receive, and believe. 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 This is what's going to happen in the next service. We're going to have 14 people getting baptized, and they're all going to wear T-shirts. We're giving to them for free. And all the T-shirt says is, I'm a believer. That's all it says. I'm a believer. Not, not I, I, I will never make a mistake ever again. It's not, see, see, it's believing. Jesus, this is what Jesus says, repent. That's what that is. And believe in the gospel. So what do you need to believe? And for some of you, it's a journey of belief. I get that. But let me tell you the three things that you need to believe. Are you ready for this? Number one, you need to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. What that means is that Jesus is the Savior of the world. See, see, when the Bible says you've got to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, again, their mindset is, oh, well, if he's the Son of God, he's the Savior of the world. He's the Messiah. For us, it's like, well, he's the Son of God. So is, every, so is a lot of people. Yeah, but the significance of this is that he is the only Savior. Jesus said of himself in John chapter 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's only one door. There's only one way. This is not me saying it. This is Jesus saying it. So, so you know, call him a liar. Call him deceived. But don't call him a good person because good people don't say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me unless they truly are the Savior of the world. That's what Jesus said of himself I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. He's the Son of God. Just in, in John 3.16, the most famous verse in the whole Bible, Pastor Adrian quoted it this morning as well. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. That here it is, whoever believes in him, will not perish, but have everlasting life. How beautiful is that? Believing that he is the savior of the world. Believing, number two, here it is, that when he died upon the cross, he didn't die on the cross because he was a bad man. He died for your sins and my sins. The Apostle Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1, I declare to you the gospel, he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. And, and in his declaration of the gospel, his first point is this, Christ died for your sins in verse 3. Christ died for your sins. Christ died for our sins. Christ died to remove all of my junk, to deal with all of my junk. Do I believe that or not? Because you can't get saved if you don't believe that. This is not about becoming a good person by your deeds. It's by believing that Christ died for my sins. And so here's the third thing that we need to believe. The first one was Jesus Christ is the Son of God. The second one is Christ died for my sins. The third one is that Christ rose from the dead. This is the essence of Christianity. You can come and play, Sean. Christ died for my sins and Christ rose from the dead. I'm telling you, this is what separates Christianity from everything else. Why is that? Because our Savior is alive. I can take you to Jerusalem, and I've been to Jerusalem. I can take you to the place where they buried Jesus. And there's a sign that says, he is not here. He is risen. And for us, that's the joy. And, and so what, what, why is it so important that we believe that? Because it says he's the son of God. It says that he has power over death. It says that because he rose from the dead, we too have the hope that one day we will rise from the dead. So for us, death is not final. Death is the transition from this life to eternal life. 
For us, we don't mourn like those without hope. For us, we mourn that we're going to miss them for a season, but very soon we'll be reunited. And, they'll, and that's when God will wipe away every tear from our eyes. There'll be no more sorrow. There'll be no more grief, but perpetual joy in heaven forever and ever. Jesus rose from the dead to give us hope that one day we too will rise from the dead. And in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, it just simplifies it so clearly. Romans chapter 10, verse 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, here it is. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So let me ask you a question today. Do you want to leave all your junk behind? All the unresolved hurts and pain and guilt and shame. Do you want to leave it behind? Do you want to receive in its place the gift of a clean record? The gift of your past resolved? And the gift of the Holy Spirit giving you a sweet spirit in life? You say, John, yeah, that's what I want. I want to leave my junk. I want to receive the gifts of God. Well, all you've got to do is believe. Believe. So let me ask you a question. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Come on, let's try it again. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe that Christ died on the cross for your sins? Do you believe that he rose from the dead? Harvey, I love that. The simplicity of faith of a child. I'm serious here. Unless we become like a child, we cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Too often we just complicate it. We just make it so complicated when it's just so simple. Let me ask you again. Let me ask you again. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Do you believe that he died on the cross for your sins? Do you believe that he rose from the dead on the third day? Then you will be saved by simply confessing him as your Lord and Savior. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer.